Hey guys, this video is on all the dosing that I do in my reef tank. I also threw in uh, the feeding that I do for my coral. Uh, so it's a complete one stop shop video. Um, it has everything in there. As you can see from the title, I don't run any dosing pumps. I don't run any reactors. Everything that goes into my tank is hand added um, on a regular schedule. I dose some stuff twice a week. I dose other things once a week. So I'll kind of run through everything that I do there and uh, give you one complete uh, review of everything that all the additives that I put into my reef tank. So let's get into what we do here. So the first thing I'm going to point out here is one of the foods that I feed my fish. It is PE Mysis. It is the 69.5% protein one. Um, and it has a protein rich slurry that, that all the Mysis is in. The Mysis itself is not carrying that 69.5% protein. Um, it, it's infused into that slurry there. So you can see as I feed it, there's kind of that cloudiness that comes off. The fish don't eat that cloudiness. Uh, that cloudiness goes back and um, gets filter fed out by the corals and, and they benefit from all that protein that's in that cloudiness that, that goes into the water as I feed the fish. So this is part of my um, fish feeding and coral feeding together. The next thing that I add here is this um, live phytoplankton pre premium reef blend. It's going to tell you to add a ton. I do not add anywhere near what it tells me to add. I add a full medicine cap, 30 milliliters full, twice a week on Wednesday and Sunday. Um, so this is me doing that. So you're going to notice I have a cube here, an ice cube of it. This stuff locally expires pretty quick. So if I were to feed it at their schedule, it would uh, it would be absolutely fine. And I, I would get rid of it before the expiration date, but I don't because they tell you to put in a huge amount. So I have a couple options. I can either throw it away when it hits expiration date. I can use it past the expiration date, which is an absolute no, because it starts dying off and it smells worse the closer you get. Or I can feed fresh frozen. Obviously, I've chose to do fresh frozen. So then we have Kent um, Marine Coral Vite. This is, has a little bit of everything in it. Uh, it tells you one to two teaspoons depending on the stock of your tank. Um, I do two teaspoons twice a week because my tank is pretty heavily stocked. Um, and it's very simple. I just simply take the teaspoon and... Um, pour two teas, put two, two, two teaspoons into my tank. Um, make sure you shake it very well on the uh, live phytoplankton. Um, I missed on that one. I do feed it as just live until it gets to the point where I need to freeze it. And uh, that one, um, you got to invert um, and get a good mix before you feed. Uh, but this one, make sure you shake very well um, before you, before you dose it again, it's got a little bit of everything there. If you look at the back and read it, it's got just a little bit of everything. Um, two teaspoons twice a week for my tanks. It's pretty heavily stocked. If you didn't have a heavily stocked or when I first started stocking the tank, um, I did one teaspoon a week. And when my stock level went up, I moved to one and a half. And now I'm at the full two teaspoons a week. So the next thing we're going to look at here is Polyp Lab 1. This is a complete um, calcium dose. Um, I used to do the two-part dosing for my calcium and alkalinity. Uh, this is complete in one bottle. So I did move to this. If you were to look at the bottle, it's going to tell you for a mixed reef, three capfuls every day. I do two capfuls twice a week nowhere near what they recommend. Um, some, some things that do more than they recommend as, as you've seen. Um, 
this stuff I do less than what they recommend. They say three capfuls every day. I do two capfuls twice a week. So as you as you know from my, plenty of my other videos, I run a canister filter. Of course, you know the best place to dose this is going to be your sump. Um, that way it doesn't come into direct contact with any corals. I do not have a sump. So I got to get creative on how I put it into my tank because if it gets, if it dumps on a coral, it's going to kill it. So I put a little bit of water into a cup. I put my two capfuls in um, and I get a turkey baster and I, I mix it up really well. Um, shake it around in there a little bit, uh, pull water in and out and just get a good mix into the cup. And then I take... Um, that mixture and I draw it up in the turkey baster and you're going to see I put it directly into my power head and let the power head disperse it into the tank. That way I don't get anything residual that drops on a coral and harms it. So pull it up into that turkey baster. Um, obviously very, it's, it's diluted down at this point. Uh, pulled up into the turkey baster and just slowly put it into the power head and let the power head disperse it throughout the tank. So I'll show you that here for a second. Um, got an up close video so you can kind of see what it's doing and then we're going to talk about the next thing. All right, so this next one here um, is part of my coral feeding, the Polyp Lab Polyp Booster. Um, this one I do overfeed on. They recommend one milliliter per 50 gallon or 60 gallons of tank water. I do one and a quarter to one and a half in my 45 gallon tank. Uh, my 56 gallon tank gets the same dosage. Uh, for me, it's about stock level. It's not about gallons of water. Uh, if I have more corals in there that are going to consume the amino acids and the fatty acids, um, I need to adjust for the amount of corals that need to consume that. So this one is well, you make sure you shake really well. Um, and then when I'm putting it in the tank, um, I drew a line so you can see about where the one milliliter is. So um, you can see right there is about one milliliter, so I have a little over half a milliliter in that draw. And the goal is one and a quarter to one and a half. Um, so I will uh, put that in the tank, and then I've got to get more to make sure I get to where I need. So again, right into the power head, just like I do everything else. Um, then I draw again, and you can see this one's about half, so that gives me a little over one at this point, um, which is a little shy from what I do, so I will do a third um, and get that all well mixed in the tank. Uh, again, that's a, a, amino acids, fatty acids, great things for uh, coloring your tank, um, help really help the corals with their color, um, as well as basic nutrition. So I, I like this stuff. Um, you feed it prior to reef roids for best results. Uh, this gets everybody into feeding mode and uh, helps them accept the reef roids um, better, in my opinion. I mean, you can feed just straight reef roids, but I think you'd be missing a lot if you didn't have this before. So then we got the reef roids. Um, they recommend one teaspoon per 100 gallons of tank water. Again, for me, it's about how many hungry mouths are in the tank. Um, so I do one teaspoon in my 45 gallon here. I mix that with two teaspoons of tap uh, of tank water. Not tap, sorry. Two teaspoons of tank water. Um, and then I mix that up and I direct feed everything. Nothing is um, broadcast fed. Um, I direct feed every single 
uh, coral in the tank with a syringe. So I do mix that up and uh, let it sit for five to 10 minutes so all the uh, reef roids absorb um, and with the tank water and get it nice and absorbed there so I'm not just feeding dry reef roids onto stuff. Um, as well as you gotta give the polyp booster, they say 30, 60 seconds to activate, I give it five to 10 minutes. Uh, so that's everything I put into my tank. Hope you enjoyed, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and uh, I'll get more content out soon. Thanks guys.